Good evening. Tonight, I present to you the truth about Bigfoot. This is essentially a look at where we are today as far as evidence, stories, lore. This will be for all the people who aren't quite convinced of Bigfoot or people who are new. And even people who are, have been into this a long time will probably find this fascinating. This is the quintessential short best answer I can give about what the Bigfoot situation is. And uh, when you start piecing it together, the overwhelming amount of evidence and support for this being a real creature. And uh, this is how I see it, the truth of what's going on. And uh, let's jump right into it. When it comes down to evidence, uh, what most people want to see, especially in this day and age, is show me the video. Well, the best video that I could present to anybody is the Patterson-Gimlin film. Now, people come on this channel, and it's always okay to disagree, but people say, oh, that's not a Bigfoot, it's a guy in a costume. Every attempt that they've ever made with Hollywood-type people to make this happen, they've never been able to succeed. They just... The proportions are wrong for a human. You can see muscle movement, the story that goes behind it, the people that are there, the, everything adds up to this being a real Bigfoot. And before the days of when uh, discreditization and the cover-up, which we'll get to later, which is why it's so prominent today. The other one was this film, The Famous White Face Bigfoot. I love this one because this really shows, I think, how their proportions are different. If you look at the space between the top of the upper lip and the nose, and you look at how far apart the eyes are, and the space between the eyes and the mouth, and the general build of these things, they are not human. And when you see them flex and you see the eyes blink like in this video, you guys should go look it up, you can tell that it's not a mask. The uh, other thing is that Bigfoot hair samples that have uh, been collected out there, you can see the Bigfoot in the middle, their hair samples aren't human but they're not quite ape and they're not quite deer. They're completely something else. And you got to remember when they test hair, like if you send a hair sample in to be tested, it always comes back as unknown generally for Bigfoot uh, because they base it on what samples they have available. And if they don't have a Bigfoot on record, then it's going to come back as unknown. So their hair is very interesting with the hollow follicle. Now, the most prominent thing people see for Bigfoot evidence is large footprints. Now, you noticed in most big footprints, there's the lack of an arch. Unlike humans, their foot is built differently, and you hear a mid-tarsal break. What that means is the break is what's left in the ground. Uh, they are built differently. They look a bit like a human. And uh, faked footprints, you can always tell because the toes dig in a lot more. Uh, but there's a lot of science and technology going on with footprints. We've come a long way with it. It's very easy to spot hoaxes, and it's very easy to spot real ones. Now... When it comes to DNA evidence, I know Melba Ketchum is very controversial, but I actually believe a lot of her work as much as the scientific community shot it down. And there's other researchers and other people tracing the genome and looking into Bigfoot. And uh, it's uh, quite remarkable what they're finding where they're part human and part something else that we really can't explain. And that pretty much sums up Bigfoot. There's lots of information on it out there. As far as audio of these things actually having a language that we've established and being a, you know, if you've ever watched Finding Bigfoot for the new people where they're calling back and forth and knocking on trees, well, we've actually had recordings of Bigfoots in the field and been deciphered by actual scientists and experts that they have a language talking back and forth. Now, we don't know what they were saying, but we established all the hallmarks. Now, go check out Ron Moorhead's Sierra Sounds. I think the Sierra Sounds in the Patterson-Gimlin film, if you want film and you want audio of Bigfoots, those are the two places to go. Those are the two most definitive ones I can give you. Now, anatomically, an upright, walking, partially human hominid species that has some great ape-type attributes to it, and, you know, because uh, humans are part of the ape species. Uh, we, we are one of the members of the great ape family. And uh, I think there's a lot of support for many other types of upright walking hominids out there, not just human beings. So it lends a lot of support that there could be others still out there hiding in the woods. Here we have a reconstruction of a Gigantopithecus. This is important because it proves that ape species can get incredibly large, can get, you know, six, seven, eight hundred thousand pounds, that they can... Uh, 
support themselves at that weight and find enough food and forage and hunt and do all those different kinds of things. Now, there's a lot of debate whether Gigantopithecus was upright or quadruped, but I think it still supports the fact that uh, there are very, very large ape species in our fossil records. Uh, they're a little farther away from a human, obviously, and I think Sasquatch is a little closer to a human. And there also is a section of the Bigfoot community that does think that Bigfoot is some kind of a, a relic species of Gigantopithecus or some kind of an offshoot of it. Now, I don't necessarily think that that's wrong, but I kind of, that's not really, I think there's something separate. Uh, but it's definitely interesting looking at Gigantopithecus when talking about Bigfoot because it's a known large ape that once walked the earth. And uh, I think it's quite fascinating. The other thing I always hear is that mainstream science thinks of it as a joke and there's no real scientist evolve and there's no real scientist or researchers, professionals, uh, PhD doctor type people looking into this. And that's just simply not true. There's actually quite a few. I know uh, quite a few anthropologists personally that find Bigfoot at least very interesting and support the idea. One of the most well-known and one of the biggest names out there is Dr. Jeff Meldrum at the University of Idaho. Uh, he's done a lot of speaking engagements. He's written some brilliant books, and I've seen him speak about it in his lectures, and he's just, he knows it so well. He buy, he backs everything up. He's even built, uh, like, what a Sasquatch skeleton would look like and attributed names, and he knows a lot about the morphology of feet. One of the other great names is Dr. Bender Nagel. Um, God rest his soul. He passed on earlier this year, and it uh, was quite sad, but I also had the honor of meeting him and seeing him speak at the International Bigfoot Conference. A lot of his works and some of his stuff is really great to look into. Um, he will be missed, and he was, an, he was a great one. One of the other big names kind of going back classically, at least in the 70s and 80s, and one of the pioneers was Dr. Grover Krantz. He was one of the people to really first start talking about Sasquatch and really go out looking there for him and uh, to actually be a professor and have all his doctorates and everything in line. Grover Krantz was one of the, the pioneering fathers. So there's three scientists right there. Um, there's a lot more than that out there. Uh, I know most anthropologists I've spoke to, at the very least even bachelor degree anthropologists, have some kind of an interest in Bigfoot. And most of them think that, you know, humans are clever if they wanted to um, survive that they could. And, uh, to them having a, uh, upright, large hominid species in North America and throughout the world seems very plausible to them other than humans. When you get into folklore and sightings and, uh, you know, not necessarily hard evidence, but I think it's really fascinating and really telling that virtually every Indian tribe, every native tribe in the United States has, some connection has some story of Bigfoot or Sasquatch or whatever their native um, language refers to these creatures as. Some of them, they're, you know, somewhat benign, kind of like, hey, we leave them alone, they leave us alone. Other of them say they're kind of evil and they abduct kids and other others have uh, traditions of trading with them. And it really kind of crosses the boards, although they all say that they need to be respected and somewhat feared. Um there's a lot of native traditions, especially here on the West Coast, going going all the way up to Canada on the West Coast. Um, you know, the hairy man, don't stay out at night. The hairy man will get you. And uh, we hunt during the day and they hunt at night. And you see the famous hairy man cave drawings here in the Sierras, uh, where my two encounters actually happened, weren't far from this hairy man cave on the uh, Indian reservation. We, we weren't on the reservation, but we were in a nearby national forest. And... Uh, you just look at a lot of native cultures and they all refer to Bigfoot as being a real animal. I mean, sure, they all have their spirit animals and uh, their variations of it, but they all refer to, yeah, Bigfoots are real. The big man's out there, is, so they would say. And when you look at the, the sightings, you know, we're talking hundreds of thousands of sightings. I mean, cops, firefighters, judges, lawyers, um, nurses, doctors, uh, you name it, anybody who could be a trained observer, army, military base, army guards, CIA intelligence, uh, highway patrolmen, housewives, maintenance men, you name it, they're cross the gambit of people who have had sightings all over the United States. And hundreds of thousands of people all see something very similar with the same description. A lot of people never even heard of Bigfoot. You know, kids see Bigfoot and then they describe what it is down to a T and they've never heard of it. 
So these people are seeing something. We can't just dismiss everybody as being crazy. Now, here's a map of a worldwide sighting. And if you look, a lot of continents, South America, Russia, Asia, um, all over Europe, down to Australia, they all have their versions of Bigfoot. And it's quite, uh, it's quite striking how from around the world they'll have the same general description as a large, hairy, upright creature, 7, 8, 9, 10 feet tall, um, generally built very muscular with tree knocking and a lot of other stuff reported. Now, one of the biggest things I always get is, well, science, we would have found a body by now. We would have, we, we would have recovered the body. And to this, this is where most people tend to be lost on the subject and they just say, oh, come on now, that's not right. Well, I got to tell you, if you look into this Bigfoot thing, even as a skeptic, the siege of Hanobi, um, there's many stories of hunters shooting these things. There's many stories of them being hit by cars and uh, truckers hitting them. You go on Sasquatch Chronicles, there's a number of old episodes that document these cases and uh, reports of wildlife uh, control specialists having to come put down Bigfoot and stories of truckers hitting them and uh, the Bigfoot was left dead on the side of the road and when the trucker came back a week later that section of the road was paved over new. So that kind of gets into the conspiracy territory. Um, There are higher powers whether it's the government or some sub agency or something out there um, going all the way back historic accounts of these things being shot and uh, strung up. Even Theodore Roosevelt um, has a story of uh, being stalked by a Bigfoot and hunted by him. But when it comes to modern day shootings and modern day hitting, getting hit by cars and poisonings, either the Bigfoot carry off their own because they work in groups and tribes and clans. They either carry off a body that's been reported quite a bit or black helicopters and government trucks and police show up they seem to be tracking these things they seem to be know where these things are they seem to have a resident population um, they seem to know these things whether they tranquilize them or they uh, probably some some kind of thermal engine thermal imaging from satellites is how they're able to track them because uh, if they were able to tranquilize them and put a tracking device in them they might as well just kill them at that point which I does think happened quite a bit which we'll talk about here in a minute people who've had Bigfoot encounters people who have in, where they have good video or proof or evidence or where they shot one. Um, and men in black type people show up, reported to be more of a orderly businessman type setup and one's reported to be more of a big biker guy setup. They use intimidation and your classic type stuff you see in the UFO type uh, community of uh, you didn't see nothing or you saw a bear or you shot a bear that day or if you know what's good for you and your family, you'll... Uh, You'll drop this whole thing right now. And why the government's covering it up, there's plenty of speculation about logging industries and outdoors and liability and who knows. That's a whole other subject. But just know that there is an active effort to cover up this Bigfoot thing. And I think one of the reasons why it's being covered up is there are a lot of missing people. People do go missing in the woods. I'm not talking about they tripped and fell in a river or got eaten by a mountain lion. I mean, under mysterious circumstances, we've talked about missing 411. This is where people go missing in the woods, huge search parties and huge efforts. A lot of times it's kids, people with special needs, they go missing. Hunters, literally, they'll have a friend go around a rock or a boulder and they're never seen again. And then their bodies will be found in an area that's already been searched. Very bizarre stuff. They'll find their clothes folded up or two or three-year-old kids up a thousand feet high on some rocky boulder where they couldn't have walked. Um, very bizarre, strange stuff. Missing 411 is, I've done other videos on it and talked about it. So that first map you saw there was a missing 411 map. This map you see here is of Bigfoot sightings. And it's to me, it's not a coincidence. And I'm not saying Bigfoot is responsible for all or even most of the four, missing 411 stuff, but I th- do think there's a portion of it that they're opportunis- opportunistic and will take people. And there have been reports of the government sending out military uh, kill teams to go eliminate these things, especially if they're hanging around properties or abducting people or getting to be a real nuisance, just the same way they do with bears and everything else, just much more clandestine. So I'm trying to keep this video short, but in conclusion, these things are out there. The Bigfoot is real. They are in the woods. They can be dangerous, much like a bear or anything else can be dangerous. 
Uh, there's a lot we don't know about them. They have certain sometimes reported paranormal things, but just know that there is a very stealthy, upright, hominid-like creature stalking the woods of North America. And please stay safe out there. Even if you don't think they exist, please stay safe in the woods and always keep an eye out. Thank you very much. If you feel I deserve it, please hit the, the like button, the thumbs up, and please hit subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks.